my name is Patrick. This video is to discuss shortcut techniques to solve data questions in the con section. So I'll take a few examples. I mean, I'll take questions from one particular slot in CAT video to paper and try to look at how to approach those questions with the shortcut techniques. That's the basic idea. The best way to understand shortcut techniques is apply to the CAT examination sums and you will be able to know how, how to approach those. So we've been training students for CAT uh, and other entrance exams. This video is specifically for people preparing for CAT, but it is useful for other students as well. Okay, now what are the shortcut techniques? And normally the techniques are the same. What you use for normally option-based questions, you can use the same techniques. I mean, to list them as such, you can use substituting values, cross multiplication, draw and get the answer, allegation, ratio, assume values, a lot of techniques. And these techniques can be used similarly for uh, theta-based questions. Theta-based questions are where you have no options, you have to type in the answer to get the answer. Okay, so you can. Let's try to look at few examples that are there. I mean, I'm looking at CAT 22 slot 1 paper and looking at how to approach those questions to get the answer quickly or using these approaches, a simple approach. There's no point learning big formula or great, it doesn't help in the examination. What helps to solve is simple techniques. And if you understand the simple techniques, you'll be able to solve things better than mugging up difficult formulas or doing difficult things. Let's try to understand. If I look at this sum, okay, we have a first equation. You see y is common. I can say y, okay, x plus z equal to 19. That means 19 is a multiplication of two values, they're natural numbers. It only possible 19 is 1 into 19, which means the only possible way is that 1, y is 1, and x plus z becomes 19. That's the only possible way. So I got a value of y. Now let's look at a second. Okay, in the second equation, I can take z common. If I take z common, you get x plus y 51. Now, 51 can be, if you look at 3 into 17, or it can be 1 into 51. I mean, if you want x, y, z to be minimum possible, the ideal they should be as close as possible. They should not be far off. Okay. But uh, if I put 1 and 51, it may not satisfy. For example, if I put 1 and 51, then z will become 1, x plus y is 51, which will not satisfy because y is 1, x is 50. If x is 50, x plus y, z will not satisfy. So I will ignore this. So we look at 3 and 17. Two cases, z can be 3, in which case x and y will be 17. x and y will be 17, we already know y is 1. So x will be 16. So 3 into 17 is 51. Or z is 17, x plus y is 3, which x is 2, y is 1. Right. Now I want x into y into z. If I take the first case, x into y into z, 1 into 16 into 3 is 48. Second case, it is 34. Since I want minimum value, minimum value is 34, that is the answer. So what did I do here? I just substituted value that was possible, that's it. I didn't use great equation, I didn't do anything as such. Just substitute whatever possible values, I got the answer. Right? Let's look at another question. Pinky is standing in the queue at a ticket counter. Suppose the ratio of number of persons standing ahead of Pinky. So let people standing ahead of Pinky be 3x, 3 is to 5, and behind Pinky is 3 is to 5, so 3x and 5x. So that means if I take the ratio as 3 is to 5, let's say, okay, total is 8. This total has to be less than 800, 300, because including her is 300, and the racing less than 300. So this 8 has to be less than 300. So how many it is possible? Check out. Just divide 300, divide by 8. Okay. 8 3s are 24, 60, 8 7s are 56, 37 times. Maximum possible. The moment you do 38, it becomes more than 300. So 8 into 37 will be less than 300. Which means how many people are standing ahead of Pinky? 3 into 37, 111. That's the answer. Cross multiplication, simple as that. So we have a ratio 3 and 5, total 8. This total 8 has to be less than 300, which is 37 times. So 3 into 37 will give you 111. You get the answer quickly. If you know the right approaches, it becomes easy and fast to get the answer. Trapezium ABCD. 
the geometry makes sense. Geometry, time field distance makes sense to draw and get. Okay, you get the answer quickly. So BC is three, AD is eight, and they said B A D is ninety degrees. So this is ninety degree. Okay, parallel line. So it's automatically become ninety degree trapezium. This is eight and this is three. So if I'm drawing, this is a draw diagram that we draw. Right. Now what else is given to you? I have three eight. They have also given perimeter is thirty six. That means some of the other two sides, which is there, C and D, A B, is then equal thirty six minus three minus eleven, twenty five. Now what you do is you can have a right angle thing. If you have a perpendicular, this becomes a three and five. Moment you have a right angle triangle, always look out for triplets. It becomes fast. What is a triplet with five? Three four five. Okay and Five, but five will be a hypotenuse up here, not possible. Five, twelve, thirteen possible. Five, twelve, thirteen. Again, this will be twelve. This will be thirteen. Again, this will be twelve. B A. Twelve plus thirteen, twenty-five satisfies. So you get the answer. So automatically, the area of trapezium becomes half into sum of parallel sides into height. Sixty-six is the answer. I mean, what I did, I didn't do anything. I just drew the diagram. I saw it as a right angle triangle with one side five. I mean, I just draw a perpendicular out here to form a right angle triangle with a side five. Moment you see a right angle triangle, always in geometry try to form a right angle triangle and look out for triplets. The moment you see five, you look out for triplet five, twelve, thirteen. If you substitute twelve and thirteen, you realize it satisfies. Moment it satisfies, you can find the area sixty-six. I mean, the key is to substitute the right values to get the answer. Become very fast to get the answer. Small techniques like Pythagoras triplets, drawing the diagram, helps you to get things faster. Remember, all these sums I'm trying to do from one slot questions from one paper. You can use the same lot of different techniques, similar techniques in other questions as well from other slot. Next, for any real x, x is the largest integer less than equal to x. Try to find pattern and see. For example, if I put n equal to zero, small n equal to zero, I will get this as one upon five. Which is zero, largest integer less than equal to x. I want one. When will I get one? When one upon five plus n upon twenty-five is equal to one. At that point of time, this whole thing will be one. So what will be n? N will be one upon five minus or one minus one upon five, four upon five. N will be twenty. So at n twenty we get it as one. At n twenty we get it as one. Now see, when will we get two? We get two when one upon five plus n upon twenty-five is equal to two. We'll get n two. So what will be the value of n at that point of time? Okay, which is n upon twenty-five is two minus one upon five, right? Which is nine upon five. So n will be equal to forty-five. So at forty-five will be two. That means from twenty to forty-four, when n equal to twenty to forty-four, this value will be one. And if you look at twenty-five such values, in that case the sum will be twenty-five. From n equal to twenty, the value is one. N equal to twenty-one, the value is one. Till n equal to forty-four, the value is one. Twenty-five values, and the summation, this is called summation, is twenty-five. Satisfies. So automatically, then n is forty-four, the maximum. Value. Up to forty-four, you get one. At forty-four, you get two plus twenty. I can need to understand the concepts, uh, the, the basic ideas behind it. So here, basically, I'll see when I get one. I get one when n is twenty. When do I get two? When n is forty-five. That means from n is twenty to n is forty-four, I get one. So twenty-five values, I get one. The sum is twenty-five. That's what I want. The sum is twenty-five. That means when capital N is forty-four, till that point of time, the sum becomes one. You get the answer. If you don't understand this right now because of the symbols, etc., that's fine. I mean, as and when you learn more, learn better, you come faster. I'm not solving this, but this similar technique you can always use allegation to get the answer. So, you how many males are there? Proportion five ninth of males. How many literate males are there? Two fifth of literate literate males. How many illiterate males are there? Four by seven of illiterate males. You do allegation, you will get a ratio of literate people and illiterate people. 
moment you do allegation at subtract these two I mean these techniques you should know I mean subtract 945 you will get 25 minus 18 7 by 45 and here it becomes 63 you will get 1 by 63 so if you take the ratio I mean 9 7s are 9 5s are you will get ratio 5 is to 49 so ratio of literate people to illiterate people becomes 5 to 49 once you get this then you can find out you know males literate from that you can find females literate once you get total literate you can find total illiterate and from there you can easily get the answer little bit calculation based but allegation helps you get the answer so learn simple techniques the moment you learn simple techniques that techniques are important formulas are not important don't get into too tough sums focus on simple methods and techniques to get the answer you will be able to do well so yeah we do have Patrick K. Parshal on Wednesday that will help you to focus on getting techniques right. You also have wrote 200 questions that will help you on Wednesday and Friday that we upload. So go to our YouTube channel and you should be able to get the resources that will help you with your methods. Right. Thank you.